Hi guys, we are back with another part in our playthrough of That Dragon Cancer. If you're just tuning in now, I'll give you a card for a playlist in the top right corner. You really need to experience this from the beginning. And if you're uncertain about whether this is a game you are going to like, it's not fun. It's emotional and heartbreaking and I've already had to wipe away the tears. Um, let's get back into it. Jesus wept for Lazarus. This is a game. Five minutes is later, he raised Lazarus. Much about religion as it is about anything else, so be prepared for that as well. If you're not the religious type, if games about this sort of thing make you uncomfortable, then this isn't for you. It's about death and hope and faith. And it's not easy at all. That is Ryan and Amy. I'm sorry. I should have known we both end up in the same place. We always do. It just scares me every time. In the last part, Amy was all about hope heal. and faith, I, and I Joel was Jesus drowning in like despair. And, sure. and they're back together, maybe. I don't know that. What do you mean? I just hope that. This is really about faith, I guess. The temple of God. And that, of course, is cancer once again. Joel in a hospital bed. And we are in some crazy, gorgeous place just haunted by this cancer. Hi, buddy. That's his sword and shield. Watching an iPad. His sword and shield are broken from the fighting. Come back for you in a minute, okay, buddy? You seem happy. Or distracted, at least. This is an eerie place. Let's head for that scaffolding up there. Wonder where that leads. This is... This may be the cathedral. This is a... One of the final levels of this game, guys. It is. It looks like it. It's a massive... Temple. Uh... That Ryan, the mind behind this game created as a memorial for his son who I see sitting up on a couch there connected to more chemotherapy lines and there are giant organs here let's keep going it's gotten a lot darker what is that it's whispers it's a candle lit. Yes. Oh Lord my God, let this boy's life return to him. These are prayers from uh, 
a last night. I think Joel was on the verge and Ryan and Amy got everyone they knew together to pray. And we're listening to those prayers. That's just a drum. Oh, candles. Gotta keep these lit, I guess. Screens are off. Yeah, that's what this is. This is a last night of prayer. Attempt to beg for the life of a kid. but I can appreciate what this scene is all about and how important it would be to a family that is. Joel? Can we go to him? No. There. He was not in the wind. He was not in the earthquake. He was not in the fire. He was here in a gentle whisper. Wow. I got a big pile of Kleenex beside me. This has not been an easy game to play. I don't know if it's been easy to watch. And I can't imagine how hard it must have been to make. Joel's father and mother, Ryan and Amy, are the minds behind this. And that scene, that cathedral, that was chilling. Picnic at the edge of the world. Guys, I think we are approaching the end of that dragon cancer. We're back. Back on the boat, back on the lake, headed towards that redwood forest. To Amy from Ryan. Are you here, Ryan? So here we are. And the air is emptier without his laugh, and yet our hearts are still full but with a different drink. And this ride we've been on for so long is silent. Yeah, it is. And so also the Lord. And so we sit here in this new silence and long for the music to start again and for the disc to spin again, even if it means going round and round for many more years. For at least we would be moving and Joel would be laughing here on earth, and not only in heaven. But in this space, I sense his silence is only because he is drawing his breath. Right. And now we know love and longing, empty and full, all in one room. Jeez. And I am grateful that we loved him well. And that we miss him well. And I hope that in the Lord's next breath, he will whisper his love song to you, his beloved. And that you will know him differently and more deeply. But now, we grieve in silence, yet not without his presence. I know I'm a let's player. I know me being silent and just playing this game is essentially equivalent to you playing it yourself, but... I kind of have to grieve in silence as well, guys. This is a powerful, powerful experience. And we are headed towards a picnic with a big pile of pancakes today, guys. 
Joel and Amy today. The day the game came out, you might be seeing this last part later, but the day this game came out, they're holding a worldwide pancake party. Ryan and Amy are, and it's Joel's favorite food, and I think this game ends with I remember you. us hanging Maybe out with too. Joel. I'm glad you're here. This is his, I love it. This yeah. is his brother Isaac. Speaking like Joel could never speak. Joel's younger brother, I think, Isaac, or older brother, it doesn't matter, does this voice here. And we got all of his favorite things. Did Juice boxes, pancakes, pancakes, dogs. Did you ever see pancakes back then? No, this is so it's many, man. A big one is for me. A little one is for my dog. Oh, that's cute. I always wanted a dog, and now I got one. I even got to name it. Ah, <laughs> oh, and you can talk. What is this? Whoa, bubbles? Right. I love bubbles. I bet. Oh, God. Man, you don't catch a bubble. Do it. <laughs> like to bite him. Does he? Look, I can touch one. Okay. There you go. I'll keep making them. <laughs> I love the bubbles. I think we're getting to experience Joel as <laughs> Ryan and Amy hoped he would be a happy, talking child with a dog he loves eating his favorite food. And I think that's how this game ends, guys. You could... Stay and blow bubbles forever. <laughs> or you can drift away. And let that be your last memory of that child who never really got to have a childhood. I think this is the end of that dragon cancer. Guys, thank you so much uh, for watching this playthrough. And I hope my playthrough did justice to Joel.